I first started sewing when I was in secondary school. So just in year seven, like when everybody does um, all your different subjects, textiles. And I just really enjoy textiles. It wasn't like a revelation of something deep or anything like that. It was literally just, we made, um, the first thing we made was pencil cases. And I just really, really enjoyed the subject. When I came home, I like you went to leave the work at school, but I would always sneak it to my bag and take it home, continue working on it. I come from a creative family, so we were all quite artistic, anyways. But we had a sewing machine in the house. As soon as I knew how to use the sewing machine, I just started taking things apart, re sewing it, buying fabric, making things, and yeah, but at that point, I didn't really have like the dream of becoming a dressmaker or anything like that. Um, no, I didn't. I had. I just thought it was a fun hobby. When I started making clothes for myself, and then my friends started seeing things that I had made, they would then be like, "Oh, can you make that for me?" And then, you know, making clothes for your friend then turned into like their friends wanting clothes as well. So from there, that's when I kind of thought, "Hmm, this could be interesting." But again, I mean, the idea of being a fashion designer. Every time I came, I brought it home to my parents. It would be like a fashion what uh, tailor. The, there's such thing in this family. So I think in my head, I just I kind of always thought, as much as I enjoy sewing, I always kind of heard that it's best to have it as a backup plan for anything else or do it along the side. It wasn't until I finished, until I got into college, yeah. that I actually decided that, okay, I think I want to do fashion and I'm going to do it. And if it doesn't work, well then I guess I have to explain myself, explain for myself why it work. But um, I was willing to kind of just take the risk. Um, one of my cousins, she recently had got married to a guy called Martin and he was at my house one day and this was around the time that I'd been telling my dad that oh yeah, I want to do fashion and all of that stuff and um, my dad was basically saying no, 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 she's not doing that, she's not doing fashion so in the living room we were all together and Martin must have asked my dad like why can't she do fashion I was even thinking, you're even bold to be like, to my dad but anyway, it's better, be talking, be talking for me, <laughs> I can't ask that question so um he said he was my dad was like yeah you know it doesn't make sense like back home in nigeria someone who does that that's a tailor so he was like i don't see why she'll do that she has the grades to do this so i was just like just sitting there and then basically he just said to me like you know what like obviously your dad is saying that because he can see potential in you mm -hmm. and it's not that he doesn't want you to be happy it's just that i guess where our parents are used to seeing university as yeah. a success he can't understand why you would turn such turn down such an opportunity. opportunity yeah. So I was like, yeah, 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 that's true. I understand all of that. However, I still don't want to go to uni. Yeah. Like, that's good. That's mm -hmm, great. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I need to be happy with what I've decided yeah. to do. So he um, pointed me in the direction of a lady by the name of Doreen, okay. who she's quite, um, she's got like a fashion company where she just has links with lots of different designers. So I met up with her um, in the summer of whatever year that would have been, I can't recall, but the summer of when I finished college. So when everyone was going, getting ready for uni, she had basically had a list of different designers who she suggested that I can do an internship with, an apprenticeship with. So she got me an internship with Osman Yusuf Sada, who is a UK-based fashion designer, he's really good. Um, so I decided that I was gonna work there for however long the internship, mm -hmm. 18 months? Yeah. Or was it actually, it was, it was actually an apprenticeship. So I said, okay, cool, that's good. So, you know, I came home to my parents, like, yeah, I decided I'm going to do an apprenticeship. And my dad just feel? wasn't, he just didn't understand. He was just like, but I don't get it. Why wouldn't you just go to university? Like, always just went to university. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't get it. People would die for this sort of opportunity. So I was just like, yeah, I mean, that's true. And us two would die for some other opportunities, but this one, I don't want it. <laughs> so then um, he was just like, he wasn't happy with it, basically. He wasn't happy with my choice. Every, every conversation in the house, that I was involved in would lead back to, but why are you not going to the university? Yeah. Like one day I asked my dad if he could buy me an apple back, and he said, "Yeah, I'll buy it if you really get to if university." You go to uni. I was like, "That's not, that doesn't even link." I said, "Fine, that's it. I don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> buy it for me. You think I'm going to go to uni because of laptop?" No. Um, but you were quite <clears> strong though to be able to, you know, put your foot down and yeah. and say, "Yeah, this is what I want." Because in most African households, no is no. You just go, you yeah. just have to do it. The thing is, so, like, yeah. I think if if I didn't. 
if I didn't maybe if I if I didn't enjoy what I was doing so much, mm-hmm. maybe I wouldn't have fought so hard for it, number one. And number two, it wasn't it wasn't a thing where I felt like at the time maybe it was more that they thought I was trying to take an easy route out. Okay. But I knew that I wasn't doing that. I knew that not going to uni meant that I'd probably have to work twice as hard because it's not like there's there's no mandate for what you're gonna do next. Like it wasn't like okay if you don't go to uni then you do this. It was like you're gonna not do the the standard thing to do. Then you're literally gonna have to figure out your plan. So I knew it wasn't gonna be an easy, easy thing. road. Mm-hmm. So if it was a thing where I was just like yeah I just don't want to do. It. I just want to sit at home and sleep. Then obviously you can say everything that you want to say. But for me it was just I understood that he just wasn't familiar with the route I was taking. But at the end of the day I knew that. I'm the kind of person who, if I put my mind to something, I'll get the job done. And, like, I mean, I, I guess every parent's dream or, you know, like hope for their children is that they're successful. Definitely. And not successful doesn't necessarily mean rich, but it means that you're happy, yeah. you're grounded in what you're doing. And for me, I knew that I'd be able to be that by doing what I was going to do. So I was like, there's only amount of time until you're going to see that. I mean, it takes three years for someone to complete university. So in my head, I just knew that in three years' time, I need to have something to show for what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. I had got the apprenticeship at Osman Yusuf Sada. Luckily, it was actually a paid one. Hardly any, it was just £100 a week. But for an apprenticeship, that's how it's much quite you good, get. Yeah. yeah, £400 a month. Yeah. Um, most interns, you don't get paid anything. Yeah. Some interns, you get paid, like your expenses get covered, your, tra- your transport and your food. At the same time, I was still making clothes. So at this point, I had started making clothes for people. I had like a couple of clients here and there. I had quite a few actually. I was making quite a lot. So one day, my dad had found. I think I've told the story. Fabric times, all but, over the house. Yeah, isn't it? no, it wasn't even fabric all over the house. It was a piece of thread. Like literally, it was a strand. It was like maybe five centimeters worth of thread mm-hmm. in the house. And I'm sure he probably like maybe took it from his trousers or something. He was like, I found this here, but he found a piece of thread. And basically said that, um, yeah, like, he doesn't want to see thread around the house and that how the sewing that I'm doing is messing up the whole house and I'm not the only person that lives here. And basically, if he finds thread anywhere again, again, then that's it. You can't sew in the house. So I was, like, with my bitter attitude, I was like, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're not going to find anything anyways. So then a couple, like, maybe a couple of days or, like, a couple of weeks later, he called me upstairs again. I was like, what did I tell you about if I had thread around the house? I was like, yeah, you said that I would be able to sew in the house. And he was just like, okay. He then lifted his had there was a blue piece of thread there he was just like i found fred and what had happened was that week my mom because remember i told you mom makes clothes yeah 
she had um, made herself an outfit for an event she was going to, and the clothes were royal blue, yeah? And the fronty brown was royal blue, so if you put two and two together, it's the blue your mom. Thread belongs to my mother, not to me. <laughs> and I hadn't shown anything blue that week, so I had no reason to be using blue thread. So my dad was like, I found thread. I was like, that's not even mine. He said, I don't care, I found thread. So basically, you can't sew in this house anymore. Mm-hmm. And at this point, I had like maybe like five dresses that I had that needed to be made for some of my clients at the time. And he was like, you need to um, find somewhere to sew by the end of this week. So I was just like, okay. When you say find somewhere to sew, I don't really understand. Yeah. And at this point, I probably should have been a bit more humble and been like, okay, I'm sorry. I'll make sure there's that no more thread it. around the house. But I think the pride in me at the time was just like, yeah, that's fine. I've had an opposite. Yeah, that's fine. I'll find somewhere to sew. <laughs> when I went downstairs, I kind of thought, find somewhere to sew, like, how? Where? <laughs> like, I make it just for 25 pounds. <laughs> Which rent? How? How do I manage? So anyways, um... Yeah, so at that point, I literally got to the computer and was just like looking studios to rent in London, spaces to rent in London, just really trying to find somewhere. And anyone who lives in London knows that rent in London is not a joke. So, and at this point, I'm like 18 yeah, or so. Like... Yeah. So I'm just like, okay, where am I going to find a studio? What am I going to do? So I'm looking everywhere, looking everywhere. I think I found the first space. Um, but when I went to go and visit, it literally looked like a prison. Like, to even get into the building was crazy. So I, I actually signed the papers to actually start using the studio and then eventually I realised that, yeah, it's not going to work. So I didn't go there. Found somewhere else. Eventually I found somewhere, um, like, in Tower Bridge area. Uh, and it was, like, it was actually £400 a month for the space. But the space was literally a box. It wasn't even, like, a studio room. Mm-hmm. It was, like, a hall with, like, plasterboard like breaking up everyone's space so it doesn't have a roof over each person's head so you literally can hear the person next door yeah breathing. yeah so then we had i had literally complaints every day because they were like your sewing machine is too loud like you're not allowed to sew in here i'm like yeah yeah it's an artistic space <laughs> i can sew but anyways, i was there for a couple of what maybe two months or three months or something and i ended up finding another space in um, this was while you were to. interning this right? is while i was um it ha- I had apprenticeship. Apprenticeship. At this time, so I just had in my head that I got four hundred pound a month from the apprenticeship, so I would always be able to pay my rent, even if I'm not eating, because I just basically four hundred pounds go straight to paying my rent. Yeah. Four hundred pounds straight to my rent. And then literally, like the way I would do my day, de- my days would be, I would go to, um, so I'd go to my studio at seven a.m. every morning, and I would work from seven to nine thirty, just quick get a quick two hours in there. Um, and then I would travel from my studio to Waterloo, which is where this fashion house was, um, from for 10 to 7. And then I would travel back from Osmond, back to my studio for about like 7.45 and then work there to like 11, 11.30. So I was actually doing that every day for 11 months until eventually I was just like, I mean, working at Osmond's was good in the sense that I mean, anyone who's been an apprentice knows what an apprentice really is. Like, you're literally buying food for everybody at lunch Mm -hmm. and making tea for everybody at every break. And you're, like, sitting at a computer desk when you come to work at a fashion house. Didn't really make sense for me. In my head, I was just like, no, I wanted to be in. And I wanted to be, like, I wanted to work somewhere where by the end of the day I was tired because I'd done so much work. But it was like, I was tired because I was staring into space all day or because I was asked to rearrange the rail that was already arranged mm-hmm. just because they needed me to do something. Yeah. And they were scared to let me put my hands on it on something. So I was really like, I was very much, I remember like Osman described me as a bull in a China store because he was just like, yeah, like you just want to just do everything. Do so yeah. I was like, yeah, like that's why I'm that's here. Right, yeah. I didn't come here to sit down at a table. But I mean, eventually they let me kind of like get involved in like cutting. And then I think when I got involved in cutting, I used to make so many mistakes. Like I remember one time he had gone to Holland to buy some material. Yeah. Well, it's really, really nice fabric. It was really that's like jacquard. Um, and basically, the way jacquard is, there's only one right side of the fabric. Mm-hmm. So when you cut, this might be a bit technical, but when you cut material, you always cut it on the fold. So um, this particular fab, this particular outfit that he gave me to cut, to be fair, I blame him. I don't know why he gave me something so complicated to the first time. <laughs> he trusted you. <laughs> not the kind of trust that I give to somebody first time around. <laughs> so, anyways, he gave me this particular um, garment mm-hmm. to cut. And it wasn't a symmetrical pattern, it was an asymmetric pattern, which means that it's not cut on the fold, you just literally lay it out. So on the pattern, it had uh, like a little um, instruction on the pattern, which basically said RSU. 
Okay. So RSU stands for right side up. But bearing in mind, I hadn't worked at a fashion house before. I didn't go to uni for fashion. So I didn't know all this terminology and all this mm-hmm. lingo. Mm. So RSU to me, me, I thought it was a stamp. I don't know what it is. So I didn't <laughs> take note of it. And personally, as the designer, I believe it's your job to explain to you what that mm-hmm. means. So anyways, I completely ignored that RSU and I cut the fabric out. So the mistake I made was that RSU means right side up, which means that when you lay the fabric, when you lay the pattern down into the fabric, it should be facing up that okay. way. And if you cut it the other way, it means that you would have cut the clothes in reverse, which means that your clothes are going to be inside That's out. Yeah. So, so imagine I've cut the whole thing, cut everything, um, literally folded it, put it in the bag, waiting for his seamstresses to sew it. And then Osmond walks in and he's looking at everything and he's like going crazy. He's like, looking at everything. He's like, what the heck is this? What is this? <laughs> I'm just like, what do you mean? What's what? And then he was just like, are oh, you stupid or something? Like shouting at me. So I'm just like, wait, I don't get it. What did I do what, wrong? Yeah. He's just like, just get out of my sight. So I'm just like, literally, how you, like, know when you watch like The Devil Wears Prada yeah. and you see like how they act. Like sometimes I think they just do it for Overboard, drama. Because yeah. they just want to look and feel like the boss, I don't know. But I was just like, I don't understand what the problem is. So then the um, production manager in the studio came to me and looked at it. And she was just like, oh my gosh, you've cut everything wrong. Oh, no. like, this material is like 300 pounds a meter. Da, 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 da. So I'm just like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Like I felt, I felt bad, but at the same time, I just thought you didn't just shout. Like it was an accident, I'm sorry. For you to work in a fashion house as an apprentice or an intern, it's, it like, sounds it's, tough. It's a lot. Yeah, it, it is because they're just mean, like for no reason. Like, even when you're trying, trying, really trying to like, you know, you, you get some yourself. days where mm-hmm. they, they start acting like they're nice. And then straight away, it's just like, why, why don't I decide, what can I do? I'm just trying to do my job. PR. I don't, I don't get it. But I believe all this would have shaped you and prepared you, you know, yeah. for the real world because yeah. obviously you know what it's like now, how tough it is, Literally. and that didn't put you off. You no. still, because you know all the things that he said, oh, you're this, you're that. Yeah, you know, that could have put you off if you yeah, weren't thick skinned. It's true. But you know, you and kept that. And I think a lot here. of people, a lot of people, because there was there was quite a few interns there at the time. Yeah. Um, people had travelled from different countries to yeah. come and intern there, um, and they weren't even getting paid. And a lot of them, they left like two weeks. One girl came for a day, never came back the day after. Mm-hmm, like so. a lot of people just left. They're just like, yeah, this is long, man. I think for me, one of the main things that it showed me was just like, I I will not be like that. I have to make sure that I am not how he is when I actually do become a designer mm-hmm. because you don't have to be like that, man. It's not nice. So my apprenticeship was meant to be for 18 months. But in the time that I was there, I soon realized that I wasn't going to get as much hands on knowledge as I thought as I would. Mm-hmm. So I was like, listen, I can't be somewhere for 11 months and not get anything. So me, I started going through books. Every time he left the studio and people were doing their own things, like there was all these different like, sorts of files placed in different places. Like they would, cause they would send you on so many errands. Yeah. So when I went to the errands, I would just make connects with the, the tailor or with whoever it was and, you know, take their number, take their name so that me, when I leave, I can also use you because good. they were good, they were good people. Um, and then in the books that he had and stuff, I just used to take pictures of the different um, different suppliers that he had because I was like, you don't want to teach me what I've come here to so learn. To me, I need I'll to get learn my by knowledge force. by force, innit? <laughs> yeah, so I took I took the knowledge that I needed. Mm-hmm. Um, quite a few of them were actually really handy. I think I still used to. to wow. Now, so thanks, Osman. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so that was that. Yeah. And then so after about eleven months, I basically just told him that, you know, it's been a great opportunity, you know, thank you for what, I, what you've given me, but I think it's time for me to go.